Hey everyone, this is DJ. I run the machine learning consultancy, Truth Data. And in this video, we're talking about AI agents and the core scientific reason they don't work yet. This is important because AI agents have gained a lot of attention over the past year. The signs are everywhere. The AI agent search trend is way up. Google and Microsoft both made AI agent announcements at their developer conferences. The AI agent index shows accelerated development, to say the least. And UiPath's survey of IT executives shows 93% are very interested in agentic AI, with 32% planning to invest in the near term. So everyone's clearly excited about AI agents. However, there's an undeniable, fundamental, scientific challenge that makes true AI agents not possible with current technology. That's what this video is about. Specifically, we will cover what are AI agents and why are they considered the next big thing, this remarkable paper from DeepMind and what it means for AI agents, and what might be the path forward. But before we get into all that, you should know about my company, Truth Data. We help companies build AI and machine learning technology. If you're at a company looking for expert hands-on help, you can email me directly at dj at truththeta.io to schedule a call at no cost. Okay, so why is there such interest in AI agents? Well, consider the standard AI products from a year ago, like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude. A user prompts it and an answer is quickly returned. That means it's passive and reactive. It only acts when prompted and it only directly impacts the world if a person chooses to do something with the answer. Now, in my opinion, this is a good default safety protocol, but AI absolutists would call this a major productivity bottleneck. That is, for an AI to be very productive, it needs agency. It needs to be able to act on its own. To be precise, let's define an AI agent. Now, there's no clear consensus on this, and there are a lot of marketed definitions that allow many tech products to count as AI agents. For example, some consider a large language model searching the internet, using coding tools, and self-reflecting on their answers before providing those answers as an AI agent. Sure, but those don't really capture what's in people's minds when they think of the AI agent future, where AIs are automating so much of our mundane digital work and cooperating to solve complex real-world problems, much like a company does. So for a fitting definition of an AI agent, I looked to a classic 1995 paper called Intelligent Agents, Theory, and Practice. The authors provide four factors. Autonomy, it acts without human intervention or supervision. Social ability, it interacts with other agents via some language. This allows agents to cooperate. Reactivity, it perceives its environment and takes actions in response. And proactivity, it doesn't just react. It forms goals and pursues them on its own. This, I agree, captures what is imagined with the term AI agent. If something man-made scores highly on all four of these, you got yourself an AI agent. Also, an agentic system includes multiple AI agents which collectively operate like a more capable agent. They need less guidance and can do more things. Now, I'll point out the obvious. If a system had the four factors and was very capable, that would be a scary thing, certainly. But that's not the focus of this video. Instead, this is about a strong theoretical reason why we don't have AI agents. It was proven in the DeepMind paper, Robust Agents Learn Causal World Models. They summarized their main contribution with the statement, any agent capable of adapting to a sufficiently large set of distributional shifts must have learned a causal model of the data generating process. Now we'll break this down shortly, but first I'll point out that this is a proven statement. Now they had to make some technical assumptions, but if you accept those assumptions, which are pretty general, this statement is undeniable. And that makes their argument really strong. Okay, next. How is this related to why AI agents don't work? Well, robust agents capable of adapting are almost certainly requirements of effective agentic systems. Second, learning a causal model, something they must do, is not technologically possible currently, at least at scale. I'll explain why later, but that's the main argument. Now I'll break down their statement more precisely, and then we'll get into what they prove. With the phrase, any agent capable of adapting to a sufficiently large set of distributional shifts, they're referring to agents which can perform well in a large variety of environments 
which are changed from the environment in which they were trained. As an example, imagine a car driving agent which was trained on the sunny roads of Florida. Then, at some point, the agent is forced to drive on the icy roads of Alaska. This is a distributionally shifted test environment. The governing rules, physics, and objectives are the same, but the amount of ice on the road is radically different. So this statement is talking about agents that can do well in shifted environments like this and many others. Next, must have learned a causal model of the data generating process. A causal model is a model that captures actual cause and effect relationships, and not just associations amongst variables in the data. Modeling associations is typical because data on its own, without knowing anything about what it's measuring, just tells you associations. Causal modeling, on the other hand, requires knowledge of cause and effect relationships, and data often can't tell you that. Their difference is often described as the difference between predicting the outcome of seeing versus the outcome of acting. Let's do an example. Say you had a data set that shows whether a group of people went to the doctor or not, and whether they were sick one week later. Naturally, those who went to the doctor are more often sick one week later because people who are sick see the doctor. Now, if you saw someone go to the doctor, you can safely predict that they are more likely to be sick one week later. That's because that's exactly what this data tells you. However, let's say you were deciding to go to the doctor. To do that, you'd like to predict the outcome of the action of going to the doctor. This is a causal question. Now, if you use the data naively, you'd conclude that going to the doctor increases your chances of getting sick in a week. But that's obviously not true. So this data can't be used without some adjustments to predict the outcome of going to the doctor. In this toy example, this difference may not seem like much, but it is in fact huge. If you have a perfect causal model of some structure or environment, you would essentially know everything there is to know about that thing. In addition to all its variable correlations or associations, you would know the outcome of any action that might interact with it, or the outcomes of any counterfactual that could play out. This is to say, causal models are much, much more information rich than purely associative models. And because of this, causal models are much, much harder to develop. In fact, there are theoretical limitations to what is knowable, but we'll get to that later. Getting back to the statement, must have learned a causal model of the data generating process, is to say, must have achieved the hardest form of modeling in some sense. Also, of the data generating process is just to limit scope. You only need to learn the causal structure that relates to the data observed. Let's get back to the AI driving example. Their statement means that an AI that was trained to drive in Florida, but could drive in Alaska and many other shifted environments, must have learned a causal model of the real world driving task. That is, it must have learned the cause and effect relationships between its actions, the car, the road, and the objective of getting from A to B. In other words, it must have learned something like the intuitive physics that people use to drive cars. It could not have merely finely modeled only associations to perform this driving, much like ChatGPT does to answer a prompt. Next, I'd like to talk about the proof a bit. First, I'll say the most interesting thing about it is that it is a proof. That is, the statement we just made is proven for a general class of causal model, and that makes it really hard to argue with. But being a mathematical proof, everything needs to be mathematically defined. So, what's the stand-in object for the messy real world in which AI agents operate? Well, they use something called a causal Bayesian network. To be very brief, a Bayesian network is a computationally convenient model of a multivariate distribution and can be represented with a DAG or a directed acyclic graph. To oversimplify a bit, in a plain Bayesian network, these edges represent associations in the data. In a causal Bayesian network, these edges represent actual cause and effect relationships. As an aside, a Bayesian network is a type of probabilistic graphical model I've written a whole series of articles on those at truthdata.io. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, so the authors suppose that the real world, the AI agent, and its objective can be represented as some causal Bayesian network. With some technical assumptions that I'll avoid here, they prove two things. Number one, if the agent always performs optimally under a very broad class of changes to the environment, distributional shifts, they must know, in some sense, 
the causal Bayesian network of the environment. In other words, nothing short of knowing exact cause and effect relationships of your environment is sufficient for such perfect generalized performance. Number two, they prove an approximate version of this. If the agent always performs close to optimally under all those distributional shifts, it must have learned an approximation of the causal Bayesian network. Since we don't expect optimal agents in practice, this theorem is what makes the argument relevant to real-world agents. You could debate the relevance, but I think it's a fair claim. Okay, so how does this explain why AI agents don't work yet? First, AI agents that cooperate with each other will certainly need to be robust to distributional shifts. Social ability, one of the factors in being an AI agent, requires productive communication amongst agents. But since you can't train agents on all interactions they have in the future, those interactions will effectively be shifts to their environment. Put simply, agentic AI requires the robustness this paper describes. Second, causal modeling as it exists today is not nearly at the level it needs to be to produce these agents. Now, I'd like to talk about modern causal modeling and experimentation. One reason is it'll paint this picture better, and another is that I've done a lot of causal modeling in my career, so I can speak on this with confidence. Now, in a commercial setting, causal modeling is about predicting the outcomes of actions. Should we do action A or action B? If so, what will happen? The gold standard is experimentation. Do a little bit of A and a little bit of B, measure what you care about, and pick the better one. The problem with that is there are way more decisions than there are experiments you can afford to run. So what do you do? The relevant discipline is causal inference. In addition to whatever experimental data you've collected, it allows you to use passively collected observational data to answer causal questions. Now, my claim about causal inference is that despite its state-of-the-art technology and huge commercial value, it is a slow, narrowly focused procedure. By narrowly focused, I mean it only concerns a handful of variables at a time normally because that's all we can effectively reason about. And by slow, I mean it takes time and patience to do it well, and it's not at all automated. The reason for this is that a causal model isn't knowable from the data almost always. Technically, it is said that the model parameters aren't identified. That means the data can't disambiguate a whole set of possible causal models. To fix this, the modelers have to make assumptions about the data using their knowledge of the thing they're modeling. Further, those assumptions are very difficult to validate. In general, there is no ground truth. To handle this, thorough modelers try a variety of assumptions and hope they all give similar answers. Let me show you what I mean. The paper, The Effect of Home Sharing on House Prices and Rents, Evidence from Airbnb, is a thorough example of causal inference. They ask, if you were to increase Airbnb listings by 1% in a particular region, by what percent do rents and house prices change? First, notice this is a causal question. If we change the amount of Airbnb listings, what is the effect on rents and house prices? We're not looking for correlations of listings and rents or house prices. Second, notice how limited the scope is. We're talking about three variables here. Third, this paper is over 70 pages long. That's how much work is involved in answering causal questions. This paper is filled with their assumptions, reasoning, multiple data sets, primary methodology, secondary methodology, results, validation and robustness checks, alternative explanations, and caution not to overgeneralize their conclusions. And I claim that this is state of the art. This paper is from 2020. You could pick your favorite engineering team and if they can't run experiments in the real world and if they want the most accurate answer, they're going to use the techniques like those found in this paper. I can also give an example from my own work. The client I work for is the company AMP. They do user engagement management. A company signs up with AMP and they take control of how their users are messaged and notified. Their technology answers the question, what messages should be sent to which people at what time? Such that they'll do some goal event like make a purchase. Now, because they're dealing with messages, there's some value in applying AI for handling natural language and generating embeddings. But you know what does the heavy lifting? Unsexy, slow, boring causal inference. That's because we need to answer the question, if we take this action, what will happen? That is, if we send this message to this person at this time, what will they do? To answer that, we have some experimental data and then precisely refined and patiently monitored 
causal inference methods. That's because that's what works better than anything else. And notice again how narrowly scoped this is. We have essentially three variables, the message, the person, and the time. But because it's a causal question, there's a whole company dedicated to it. That's just the nature of how intensive, effective causal modeling really is. Now to recap everything, here is my argument. Agentic AI systems capable of automating a lot of our work and achieving complex goals are currently out of reach due to a fundamental unsolved problem. That's because they require AI agents to figure out causation at some level. And that was proven in a theoretical case with the DeepMind paper. And modern, state-of-the-art causal modeling is a slow and narrowly focused practice that can't be automated and scaled with the current technology. So, we need a breakthrough in causal modeling before agentic AI becomes a high-impact technology. Now, I realize this is a lot of cold water on AI, but I'm not actually an AI skeptic. There's a lot to be optimistic about, and maybe things will progress faster than I think they will. So I'll ask, if I were to discover that I'm wrong about this in a year, how might that happen? Well, I don't think you can avoid causal modeling and experimentation, but we could make serious progress on those things. One potential route is through reasoning models, which have done very well on some really hard math benchmarks. That's good evidence that there's some form of legitimate reasoning happening there. One thing that could happen is this reasoning could be exported to the causal modeling domain. Causal modeling involves a lot of intuitive reasoning about the structure being studied. It's possible that reasoning models could scale up this type of reasoning. However, one thing to point out is that reasoning models rely on verified data. In mathematics, we know what the right answer is, but there's no analogous ground truth in causal inference. You almost never know the exact cause and effect relationship. So for this to happen, it would involve a very impressive extrapolation from a verified domain to an unverified domain. Still, that's what I bet on. Okay, last thing, and this is super important. I run the consultancy Truth Data. We specialize in building data science, machine learning, and AI technology. We work with startups, financial firms, and retailers, helping them develop technology that actually works. No hype, just solid, practical, grounded solutions. If that sounds like something your company could use, reach out to us. You can email me directly at dj at truththeta.io. That's dj at truththeta.io. And we'll schedule a free call. Okay, that's it. I'll see you next time.